Hello all and welcome to this afternoon's review. It's a little past four o'clock, four ten exactly, and um, getting to see me now uh, with a very, very rare occurrence, my hair being neatly combed. So I just went and finished scrubbing the tub and of course, because it's hot as heck, I decided to just do it with cold water and let it go all over me because it's cooling that way and of course I comb my hair after I'm done getting my hair wet. Um, so yeah, my hair is combed, and as you can see, even though it's like freshly combed, there's still like parts sticking out, because that's just the way my hair is, man. So what are we reviewing tonight? Well, I'm actually really excited and really happy to be reviewing this one. And this is, of course, scotch. <laughs> uh, Isla scotch. And this is Ardbeg 10. The infamous Ardbeg 10. So... Quite a lot on the on the back here. Let's go and read it, shall we? The Ardbeg Distillery lies on the most southerly part of Isla on the rugged shores of the Atlantic Ocean. Isla is an antique land where Celtic monks found refuge from raiding Norsemen and early distillers smuggled their illicit aqua vitae at Ardbeg's Cove. Here the lords of the isles ruled the clan kings whose bloodline runs through the MacDougals of Ardbeg, founders of our noble whiskey. Isla history is Ardbeg heritage, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing Ardbeg right. Go and correct me in the comments. The island's past lives in their present. Ardbeg is revered around the world as the peatiest, smokiest, most complex whiskey of all. It does not flaunt the peat, whether the, rather the peat gives way to the malt. The natural sweetness subtly intrudes for perfect balance. The unusual spirit still with its purifier, the only one of its kind on Isla, is what contributes to this balance to making Ardbeg the, truly the ultimate. Most whiskies are chill filtered to a strength of 40 degrees ABV. Ardbeg 10 years old is non-chill filtered to a strength of 46%, thus re retaining maximum flavor while giving more body and depth. On adding water, a little cloudiness may occur. This is perfectly natural and not a matter for concern. So, I'm just going to open this up. I am not going to be adding water because I have learned that it is very rare that the addition of water tends to improve the experience for me. Maybe it would be the case if I was doing a lot more barrel or cask strength whiskies, but I don't. So, yeah. So as you can see, this is actually pretty well thing. I went and got this for a party, so about half of it was drunk at the party, and it's fairly expensive here in Hawaii. This bottle cost me $67. Um, so once I do this sampling, it's going to go up into the cabinet and reside there for special occasions. So, let's go and pour this out, shall we? Big smell that you can get right on the opening there. So, a nice, clear, straw yellow. Exceedingly thick legging. And the nose is very smoky. So, fresh medical gauze. Laundered clothes. Oaky vanilla. Hints of pear juice. Salted caramel.
all in all, a really nice, smoky, caramel, caramelized smell kind of exudes from it. Hints of sea spray and brine. The peat just really lasts and lasts here. It's all around. On to the palette, shall we? Initial sweetness, then huge smokiness that mer emerges from the front and into the mids and into the lasting finish that goes on and on and on. After you finish drinking this, you will still have that smoky peat finish in your mouth and in your nostrils. Black pepper that emerges in the front to mids and then suddenly grows in spiciness and prickliness and heat into the long finish where it slowly subsides. Also oakiness on the long palate, on the long finish of the palate. In the mids, almost like a oceanic minerality, like seashells in the sun. Or sea spray in the sun. You know that sort of smell of baking brine. Underneath those spicy and smoky notes, a subtle vanilla base. Hints of floral honey. But all very subtle there compared to the big booming peatiness. Hints of that salted caramel also show up. This is a nice sipping whiskey. You can just, each sip, you can go and return to it and explore it and just kind of like suss out all these various details that are there. And it, it's, it's really just absolutely sublime. In the long finish, the smokiness really takes on the characteristic of Latakia pipe tobacco, which is a smoked tobacco. 
So rather unsurprising, really. And what I mean smoked is like um, it's you know dried over pine smoke, so it has a very smoky feel to it. If you were to pair this with something, the obvious choice would be with a smoked meat that is fairly fatty. In this case, I got it because we were going to have Kahlua pig that night, and Kahlua pig is sort of like smoked pork, um, Hawaiian smoked pork, more or less. And um, it was a fairly good pairing, um, though this is much more powerful than Kahlua pig, or Kahlua pork. Another nice thing is how that black pepper works and you know it, it it it's not there at the initial front but it's there and then it grows and then subsides. All in all nice and interesting. So ocean, smoke, you know, cotton gauze, cotton medical gauze, um, yeah, sweetness, spice, it, there's a lot there, and I'm probably not touching even all of it. I think this is one of those ones that, um, you know, you'll get five different people to go and taste it, and you'll get five different, you know, uh, flavor profiles being described. Uh, just because of how complex and nuanced it is, both in the nose and on the palate. It's very pleasant to drink, you know, just because of complexity. And it just lends itself to, like, sipping so well. You know, um, gave this to my brother-in-law and gave him a couple fingers of it, and he was like, this is some damn good scotch. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much how you could describe it, is damn good scotch. Now, your mileage may vary. Um, if you're not into peat monsters, this is pretty much the definition of a peat monster. And, yeah. You know, but if you like those smoke bombs, if you like complex scotches, um, you know, this is a good good enough place to start as any. It's probably going to be the easiest of, you know, the uh, Ardbeg line to go and find. Ardbeg goes and creates a lot of limited releases and special releases that are fairly difficult to go and get your hands on. This one, not so much. Uh, you can find it on the shelf pretty easily. And it's a good entry point into, you know, is La Single Malts. So yes, Ardbeg, Isla Single Malt, Scotch Whiskey, 10 years old.
very well worth it. Very well. Go and try this. If I mean, like, if you like scotch, this is definitely one of the ones that you must visit. And um, I'm just kind of sad I don't get to visit. The, you know, the world of scotch has scotch whiskey as much as I'd like to, just because of the price point. But every time I do visit, it's, you know, I'm always nicely surprised by it. Well, that's your Scotch Whiskey review for tonight, folks. Cheers. Time to make dinner. Or should I say slunting? I don't know. Is it is it also slunting in Scottish? You tell me. You have a good night, folks.